Why, yes, I do look like a cartoon character, don't I? A kind person out there has sent to me an electrolysis device to create oxyhydrogen. Along with equipment to connect it to a vehicle. I must therefore reiterate once again that there are claims out there made by literally a thousand and more websites that claim that devices such as this increase a automobile's fuel efficiency, raising the gallons per hour that a vehicle can travel with, or if you like, uh, liters per kilometer. On demand under the hood device, which the car itself powers to increase fuel efficiency in a vehicle. That is the claim. The claim is increased fuel economy. The null hypothesis, however, is devices such as this do nothing to a vehicle at all. No increase in fuel economy, no decrease in fuel economy, no detection of this device at all in anything and everything measurable in a internal combustion engine in a vehicle. That is the null device, uh, null hypothesis. Therefore, that is the test that I am going to apply. I am going to try to refute the null hypothesis. I am going to try to refute the claim that these devices do nothing in a vehicle, either positive or negative. When one is doing a proper test, one does not try to prove or disprove the claim that these devices increase a vehicle's fuel economy. That is wrong. You test for the null hypothesis and you try to refute it. And the, the conclusion of those tests are what determines if anything, what such devices do to one's vehicle. Anyhow, I have run some preliminary baseline data on my vehicle. It's a Chevy Tahoe. And I am building a load cell device to test this. Load cell being, I will be blocking all four tires of the vehicle off the ground. And I'm going to make the vehicle level and I'm going to put various loads on the drivetrain of that vehicle with this device running off of the vehicle's power system. This device will always be on. Always. That is the only way to fairly test if the device uh, produces enough oxyhydrogen to make any difference to the internal combustion engine on the vehicle. I have run, like I said, preliminary data on the vehicle without such a device. And I'm going to share that first in the introduction to the device's testing sequence. It will take a hell of a lot of time and effort to test this device properly and fairly. In the past, I have said that if one of these devices increases a f vehicle's fuel e efficiency or fuel economy by 14% or greater, I would award $1,000 to whoever let me test that device. The person who sent this device has not made that claim. The maker of this device has not claimed that it will increase a vehicle's fuel economy, even though on his website it implies over and over and over and over again that the device actually will do that. Oddly enough, implication, but not a statement that it actually will. Which kind of makes me wonder that the person selling these devices knows, or at least suspects, that they do absolutely nothing of any value to the vehicle. Because he will not actually state that it decreases the waste of gasoline increases the economy of the fuel in a vehicle. You can expect some video and test results on that in a couple weeks or so. Like I said, I still haven't finished building the load cell. 
I'm going to test the device at idle, which is around 660 revolutions per minute with a 3% load. That is standard engine idle um, mechanics on this, the Chevy Tahoe. I'm then going to put a load on it of about 15%. And I'm going to test this device <coughs> with it always on and with the alternators filled on. That is, I'm going to uh, plug in this device. I'm going to leave the hose unattached to the vehicle and I'm going to wait for the alternators filled to turn on so that this is being powered by the engine and this device will stay on all the time for every single test not just testing the oxyhydrogen coming out but testing baseline when the oxyhydrogen is not being introduced into the air intake system it's the only way to test these devices fairly oxyhydrogen if it does anything to a vehicle um, engine wise fuel economy wise that is the only way to test these devices you do not turn these off and on to test them you turn them on you leave them on what you do for testing the oxyhydrogen you introduce it into the engines air intake to test for baseline you remove that hose you plug the hole with duct tape in your air intake on your engine. You run tests for another 30 minutes under a single load, 15% or so. You put the hose back in your air intake. You put a load of perhaps 25% or 30% on the engine. You run tests, uh, measurements of the engine with it introducing oxyhydrogen. Then you yank that cord out again, you leave this device on, you plug the hole again, and then you take another 30 minutes or so of, of reading under 30% load. It's the only way to correctly measure what, if anything, these devices do. And that is what I'm going to do. I give myself maybe two weeks before I build the um, load cell for my vehicle. It's going to attach to the back of the vehicle and then I'm going to make videos testing. Since the person who sent this to me did not make any claims, that person is not eligible for the $1,000 prize that I have if it increases fuel economy by 12%, not 14, 12% or more. I talked with my automotive engineer and that person said that one can expect about an 8% uh, variation in the test that I uh, plan on doing. I figure 12% is more than fair for natural variability with and without these devices. 12% or higher is the award limit, not 14 like in the past. Anyhow, stay tuned if you're interested.